Hi everyone, this is Dr. Vivek Goyal. Got a medicine postgraduate seat? Welcome aboard to the medicine fraternity. In this video, I shall be addressing the few questions and issues that I am being constantly asked regarding how to approach medicine postgraduate residency. First things first, yes, you have done it. A big shout out and congratulations to all the medicals who have cracked the PG entrance and attained the all important medicine seat. But what is the way ahead? Is getting a PG seat enough? Yes, this is going to be your new abode for probably the next three years. Eat, read, see patients, sleep and repeat. A few tips. Maintain a pocket notebook. Jot down any important point, a sign, a symptom, a trial, a drug, a dosage or anything that your seniors or your consultant tells you. Go back to your room, read about it, consolidate. A golden sentence that my mentor used to tell me. Morning rounds are for consultants, evening rounds are for postgraduates. What do you mean by that? In the morning round, your priority shall be writing notes, reviewing the drug charts, follow the orders of the consultant. But during the evening round, you can examine the patient yourself, ask for his complaints, think, for, think of differential diagnosis, see what else can you contribute to the management of the patient. Always try to contribute and it will widen the horizon. Yes, Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine continues to be your Gita, Bible, Quran or Guru Granth or any holy textbook that you name. A tip, if you look at the contents, part 2 that is cardinal manifestations and presentation of diseases, start with it. It contains the basic symptoms and signs of each system. If you read it, reading the diseases proper will be much easier. My approach would be case based versus system based. If you happen to see a case of say a motor neuron disease or a guillain barre syndrome or a mitral stenosis in your medicine board, go back to your room and read that case rather than reading the entire system at one go. And yes, make notes. Harrison's textbook at the onset appeared to me very monotonous with the same small font, less of pictures. So notes making helps to memorize much better. Medicine is one subject that cannot be learned from home. You need to be at the bedside seeing the patients. And one thing you cannot compromise with is clinical skills. That too with the reference and standard clinical methods. My books would be Hutchinson textbook of clinical methods for cardiology, Dr. Soma Rajus and Bicker Staff's neurological clinical examination refers to be the standard reference clinical examination book for neurology. In the beginning, emergency and casualty postings shall appear to be very frightening for you. You shall feel lost or frozen. A Washington Manual of Medical Therapeutics will be a very handy book to have by your side. You can refer to it anytime you want. Do not worry. Just observe your seniors and your consultants and gradually, just like them, things will become a spinal reflex for you as well. Paul Marino's ICU book protocol is a very good book, especially during your critical care postings. You know, the best part about residency is you can afford to be vulnerable. In fact, it is good to be vulnerable. Expose yourself to all the procedures. You might make mistakes in the beginning. Learn from your seniors. Practice each procedure again and again Till you master that skill it can what it shall also do is it shall help you to know whether you are good at intervention or not so that in the future if you want to become an interventionist you might as well opt for intervention specialities like cardiology or gastroenterology if not you can choose neurology or other subjects as well the golden rule teaching is the best way to learn as a first year or a second year postgraduate, make a group of your, of your juniors 
the final years or the interns teach them bedside cases teach them clinical methods and procedures discuss ecg and x-ray with them what this shall do is it shall expose you the void in your own concepts the silly questions that your junior asks ask you will help you to understand the concept better and that will help you in the long run new avenues that shall be open to you probably for the first time during your residency are cmes and conferences participate in them both in local and national conferences participate in quiz competitions do not hesitate what it shall do is you shall come in contact with great personalities and achievers of your own field when you see them you will get inspired and you would want to be like them you will come in contact with the medicine residents nationwide and you will get to know how where do you stand at the national forum try to publish as many articles as you can during your residency it is a best time case reports are the easiest if you find any rare case or rare presentation of a common case try to publish it regarding thesis do not get overburdened it shall go easy the topic shall be given most probably by your mentors but just a tip try to choose a topic of that sub specialty that you want to pursue on later association of physicians of india is the national body to which all the medicine people are affiliated to go to its website enroll yourself and look for the regular updates that come on it regarding articles where to look for it pubmed is the standard reference website where you can look for any reference article be it review article or case reports as to how to write them or how to send them also yes now you need to learn 24 into 7 every second information changes and you need to get updated so just mere orthodox learning from textbook from hard copy will not suffice you need to learn every minute every second up to date is one app i could not have imagined my life without in my medicine residency it's a paid app most of the educational institutes have an educational subscription to if they don't you must subscribe to it it has beautiful management algorithms it has calculators drug dosages the new updates medscape is one app which is free in most of the app stores e medicos of course it's a mandate for every medico you have a variety of things that you can learn from coming to reference textbooks most many of you have asked me which textbook to follow for which super specialty now see there are many both indian and foreign authors but the textbooks i followed were coming to neurology bradley's textbook of neurology very lucid very good d jones neurological examination is a very is a must to read during your neurology postings coming to nephrology comprehensive clinical nephrology by fee halley is a very good book williams textbook of endocrinology for endocrinology kelly's textbook of rheumatology for rheumatology and slesinger's book of gastroenterology is a very good book for cardiology i would recommend bronwell's textbook of cardiology and a must to have is a textbook of ecg and i would recommend shamrock's textbook of ecg now one reminder all these books are pretty expensive and it is not a mandate to have a hard copy of each you can do with a soft copy and a pdf version in your in your tablet and your mobile phones and the best thing would be just have the book of the super specialty you want to pursue later a very important thing is to read standard guidelines for example with regard to cardiology read the guidelines of american college of cardiology for nephrology read the kdgo guidelines for neurology read the an guidelines all these guidelines even have a mobile app so what you can do is you can download the mobile app and keep those guidelines in your pocket only so is it the end or a new beginning well as they say in our profession no degree is enough no knowledge can suffice in fact the higher you step up the ladder 
the more you get to know how deficient your knowledge is. What else can you do? Yes, membership of Royal College of Physicians. It's a very helpful worldwide degree that you can acquire right from your own place. It has three parts, MRCP part one, part two, and a practical examination that is spaces. DAMS itself offers the MRCP one training. What else can you do? You can subscribe to a few question banks that is BMJ on examination and pass test and which can help you give confidence to cracking those exams. Better to start preparing for those exams from the second part of the first year residency because by that time you will have seen a few patients and you will have acquired clinical skills as well. Super speciality. Today is the era of super specialization. Yes, this is the harsh reality. What to do for it? Nothing so great. Whatever you have been doing till now, that is reading Harrison textbook thoroughly, following the reference textbook thoroughly, that is enough. What else? Make notes. Because note making always help you to memorize better. Because the questions here will be concept based and less information based. Dams is the only institute that offers super speciality courses. There are a panorama of super speciality courses. Subscribe to them. I would suggest the ideal timing would be the second part of the first year or the initial part of the second year PG residency. There are question banks as well. If you solve them, have these courses with you, nothing can stop you. Thank you very much.